Welcome to the StockOptionAssassin.com's free Trade of the Week video. Today is Monday, February 3rd, 2014. My name is Eric, and in this week's video, we're going to do a couple things. First, I, I want to talk a little bit um, about the Keltner channels that I have on here and why I'm going to use them. Um, basically, with January's performance, let's go back to like a weekly chart real quick. Uh, January, we opened up here. And basically, you know, it's all out there now that we basically sold off and we continue to sell off. Today's the first day of February and we're down 2%, which is actually kind of interesting because typically over the past few years, the first day of the month has been usually somewhat bullish uh, because a lot of hedge funds and things, uh, pensions, plans put their money into the market. So that's not happening today. Uh, but besides that, um, the for the so the fact that we've sort of sold off into the month and we continue to sell um I, i'm not a, extremely bearish on the entire market for the rest of the year i think we're more uh going to be in kind of a range bound mode and so whenever we get range bound uh which just hasn't really happened the last few years the last few years we've just kind of been you know going upwards but now that you know we have a pretty good chance of being a little more range bound um, I like using a modified Keltner channel, channel to find where or try to pinpoint where reversals can be, where we can go short, we can go long. And what we're going to be looking at is a modified Keltner channel. Now, Keltner channels are a volatility based envelope and it's set above a, a set that you have a sort of a band or envelope above and below an exponential moving average. So I'm going to give you the settings here in a minute, uh, but basically, um, they're similar to uh, Bollinger, Bollinger bands, where where you know most of price should be contained inside. Um, but what we're going to do is modify the Keltner channel so that uh, that when stocks are at or outside of the channel, there's pretty good chance for some sort of bounce or stalling or, or reversal. So you now you don't want to just buy at the lower band and sell. It's good to sort of coordinate this these bands with other key levels, and we'll look at that in a minute too. Um, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So first, let's just look at the settings for um, uh, the, the Keltner channel that I'm using. So for, I'm going to go into Edit Studies, I'm going to go to Keltner Channels, I'm going to open this up. So as I mentioned, we're using a 13 EMA, and that is this purple line on the uh, chart. And um, we are using a factor of 1.5. So what does that mean? Now, I mentioned Bollinger Bands, which uses standard deviation. But Keltner channels actually use average true range. So when something is trading outside of its 1.5, 1, 1 its average true range, there's a pretty good chance that at some point soon that this stock or ETF will revert back to the mean. And the mean is a 13 EMA. So again, it's not perfect, uh, but when we're range bound, I like to look for key levels and we're kind of coming into one now on the SPY. I zoom out a little bit. You can see we have some horizontal uh, support here, which would be around 173.60. We have this uh, pivot here, which is around 174.70. So, and we have this longer term um, trend line that we're kind of at too. So there's pretty good chance that we're gonna find support in this 170, we'll call 173 to 174 range. On top of that, we are oversold because we are trading outside the bands. So do I want to jump in and go long right now? No, I'll, you know, maybe on maybe tomorrow, maybe Wednesday, we'll, we'll, we'll look at some um, buying some calls and look for kind of a snapback rally. For those that are, are savvy and know how to sell put spreads and things, that's that's something you could actually do today. I'm actually going to wait till tomorrow. But uh, any kind of pierce of these levels, uh, then you look to sell a put spread underneath that and look for a reversion to the mean and you take the put spread off. So as volatility continues to spike here, as people buy puts, you're selling them those puts and looking for uh, some sort of reversion to the mean. So, um, but anyway, so the so those are the Keltner channels that I'm using. They are a modified channel. There's not the default. The default channel, you'll often find them to be a lot more narrow and the stocks are, are you know, trending stock would be trading outside the band. So, you know, you can see even here in this trending, uh, when the SPI was trending, it would hit the upper band. It would kind of just keep going. Um, so, you know, this is more of a trending market. This is why I didn't really use the Keltner channels in um, during this time. But now that we've got some volatility, um, now the trend can very well, you know, continue downward. But once we hit those key levels, I'm expecting some uh, some fierce snapback rallies along the way. 
So um, let's take a look at how I can use these. Um, now, uh, well, first of all, you could actually use these on weekly charts as well. Um, you can see on a weekly chart, and I do that where we come down as we get to the lower band on a weekly chart, there's a good chance that you can get, get back up in the, in the trending market. So right now we're kind of hitting the lower band. We're at some key levels. Uh, if we get a rally back up, then you could look to short the mean and look for a next leg down, uh, depending on the market conditions. But what I'm fo focused on now is during this sell-off, what I'm focused on is finding stocks that are not selling off or showing some relative strength kind of hanging in, hanging in there. And as the market gets to these levels, look for stocks that are hitting their or near their lower bands and look to go long on those stocks. So, yes, you could go long the index, um, but I prefer going long strong stocks. So let's look at a couple plays. Uh, one name I actually entered a small position today just to kind of get some exposure is AMBA. And you notice the position of the bands here, the, the Keltner channel. AMBA had a huge spike up, and now it's kind of in this sideways consolidation mode. And it's trading you know, below its 13 EMA, but well within its, its uh, lower Keltner channel here, lower band. And so for me, as we enter this, you know, kind of, uh, you know, what could be trend line, I, I bought some February 33 calls. And as the market, if the market can bounce the next couple days, and if AMBA can get back up, then that's, you know, from, from uh, 30 and a quarter up back up to 32, 33, then, I mean, you can, you can make 60, 80% in options like that, 100% get catching that move. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not an idiot, and I'm not going to go all in or anything with this, but all I'm looking for is gyrations and potential points. So stocks that are consolidating, they're going to stay within their bands. Um, now you could wait, you know, if it's selling gets really ugly, AMBA could sell all the way back down to 28, where you would have some sort of horizontal support, and then you would be at the lower band at that point. I might actually pick up some more contracts and look for a mean reversion. Right now it's sort of trading, you know, j just what it is. It below the mean, it comes back, it goes above, comes back, comes around. So just looking for these range bound stocks. So I like AMBA. Um, another one I like, we'll see how it's doing now, it wasn't doing too great, was UTX. It's actually piercing its lower band. Bigger picture, this thing's in a nice nice kind of uptrend. We have this nice long-term trend here that's closer to about 109. And so if we reach 109 um, in UTX, so maybe this is tomorrow, and we pierce that and we get a little bit of a bottoming tail or maybe a, we gap down and we doji out or something, then this is a good place to actually get long and look for retracement or sell some put spreads. So that's the kind of play that I, uh, kind of plays I'm looking at. I'm looking for more of a range bound market and I'm letting, instead of using an oscillator, I'm using these bands as sort of overbought, oversold. So as we get oversold and if the market finds its footing, then you find stocks that are, that are holding their bands. Now there's a lot of stocks that are not holding their bands and those are not the stocks you want to go long uh, because they're not out, they're not um, performing as well. Let's look at one more uh, CRM. Uh, and look, I mean, I know it's ugly. This thing is down 3.7 percent today, and you could say, man, why would you even think about getting long? And the reason why is because this is a bullish stock. We're coming back into what would be support, and yeah, maybe it pierces it. But as soon as it gets oversold down here, maybe about 56, this thing is likely to reverse because the market's likely to snap back. And anything that's still trading near its 52-week highs, I mean, this thing made 52-week highs uh, two days ago. So you gotta think about that. This is a strong stock and it could definitely sell off some more, but when it's time for that snapback rally, uh, these are some of the names that I'm kind of looking at. So uh, before we go, I wanna talk about Target. Last week's video, we talked about Target and I still have my, my uh, Fibonacci grid on here. And we've kind of pierced through that. And I did not get long on target yet. I was kind of looking at it, but the market was so heavy that what I'm waiting for is the market to um, kind of show, you know, find some support. And right now it's looking like 54 and change might be a better entry for target. Um, so that's what I'm looking at. You do have earnings coming up, so you need to be careful uh, with that trade. So I have not entered Target in yet, uh, yet, and that's mainly because the SPY continues to sell off. So remember, this was sort of a longer term play uh, where you could buy the stock. What I'm actually entertaining the idea of doing now, though, is looking at some far in the money options. Let's look at that uh, right now real quick. Let's look at the trade tab for Target. And what I was looking at is the January 2015 coming here. 
looking at the $50 calls. Right now they're trading for about seven bucks. So if Target drops another dollar or two, these will be slightly cheaper, maybe six bucks. And that would be sort of a long-term hold. This is an option. I may actually do a combination of buying some shares and buying some options. So if you think about it, if you buy 100 shares of Target at, let's just say it's 55 bucks, it's gonna cost you $5,500. So you know, if, if you're one to risk you know, $500 or $1,000 a trade, you could put a 10 or 20% stop on that. But for the, for the way less uh, capital outlay, you can go with like one option here for the same year controlling that 100 shares. Uh, let's look at the delta on that real quick. Last week it was about a delta 70 or so. Where is it? There. So this is the, yeah, so it's a delta 70 now. Um, as, as it continues to sell off, the delta will uh, actually decrease a little bit. But I like buying delta 70 options, maybe delta 80. You could actually go farther in the money if you wanted to. And it's a little bit more of a stock replacement strategy. strategy. So again, if you buy 100 shares of Target per 100 shares, you could buy one um, $45 call and risk the entire thing. And that would be the equivalent of risking um, $1,000 on the share. So, if Target does reverse, and I think it is going to, or at least get a retracement back up to 60, um, then that that option is going to make you know pretty good amount of money percentage wise. And again, you don't have to lay out as much. So that that's kind of what I'm looking at. I'm I'm waiting to see when this market sort of settles down first. Um, but the, I just wanted to give kind of an update to that Target trade. So hopefully that helps. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you next Monday at the next update.